the trade union movement, this was pre-Thatcher, the trade union movement, particularly in engineering, which is what we're talking about, was incredibly strong. You know, in a way, the Lucas plan was a product of a very confident, very well organized um, trade union movement. I mean, particularly at a shop floor level. So what the Combine Committee itself is worth, worth understanding in some depth because without the Combine, there would have been no plan. I think John and other shop stewards would agree with me that, that the Combine brought together the representatives of the workers who were the creative energy behind the plan. And in a way, you could say the Combine Committee and the Stop Stewards Committees, they, they brought together the knowledge, not just the, the, the industrial power, but the knowledge and creativity and capacity of those workers. So my first point is really that it shows how whatever products, whatever technology, uh, whatever you know, kind of production, whether it's high carbon or low carbon, that we have now, you know, whether it's military production or other kinds of production, a production of, mili of, of health equipment, for example, or whether it's aviation or health equipment, uh, depends on the workers, you know, the, 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 the creativity, the productivity, the, the capacity that, that actually leads to the production, the design, and the skilled work involved in that, in that, in the making of that product lies not with the, the, the shareholders or the managers, but with the, with the workers. And particularly when the workers come together as skilled workers, as design workers, and as general workers, they have a tremendous knowledge and overview in a way about what could be produced. And we're seeing that now. I mean, I, at the beginning of the, of the, pandemic I in response to the call for um, ventilators ventilator production I thought well this could be a very good example of a kind of conversion conversion of uh, aerospace production you know because there wasn't going to be much much flying uh, during the pandemic so the whole aerospace industry was going to be in a state of collapse um, but yet you had highly skilled, highly organized work at those industries. So I, I tried to find out what was happening. And um, I found out that in, in Airbus, for example, in the North Wales, but probably other Airbus companies and also other um, in Fords as well in Dagenham, there was a, a transformation um, for the, the urgent production of ventilators using um, a model of, a, of an existing ventilator company that was that had only a very small amount of capacity and in the conversion of the Airbus production process to the production process of, of ventilators the role of the union was key because the union organized the the workers on whom that production depended and so much of the new ventilator capacity came from um, that kind of conversion process, which, you know, in a way, in its basic logic, even if its origins are very different, its basic logic was a bit like the, the plan. It was, a, a pl it was an initiative for socially useful production, uh, i.e. production that met the needs of the people, the health needs of the people. And I think that's the, the kind of lesson of today, that we, have, we live in this extraordinary moment where suddenly there's a very clear balance between um, you know production and economics for need i.e an economic system that takes account of our urgent health needs you know recognizes the the, the health and safety problems of going back to work uh, and actually puts people's health first versus a, a dynamic which is putting the the, the making of profit first and I think in that context, all the arguments about socially useful production, production for social need, suddenly become really, really important. Um, and so one question is whether this moment can be, this opportunity can be grasped to, to look for um, alternatives that are low carbon. I mean, in a way, our next emergency is going to be the climate change emergency. 
and our only you know now we we've learned from the the way the government has dealt with this the shambolic way in which the government has dealt with this crisis that any future crisis requires planning and preparation and okay we're now trying to stop the climate change crisis by by converting to a low carbon economy but that needs preemptive action so that needs a conversion now from the aerospace industry to um to to socially useful production and we know that you know there's ventilators is one product in other words is kidney dialysis machines that that actually Lucas did make and one of the demands of the plan was to make more and these are going to become necessary because the pandemic is going to be with us and one of sad effects of the um of the of the uh, disease of co the coronavirus is to actually destroy people's kidneys so so all these all these forms of equipment are going to become more and more necessary um so that's one the one general lesson that that it kind of shows us a very practical very feasible and very um um yeah, well I, I think just very practical is the answer really way of um addressing social need and, and climate justice um, and thinking about economics in a different way and production in a different way uh, and looking at it from the point of view of the needs of society rather than from the point of view of private profit and that isn't just about ownership it's also about control and about the deployment of skills and and about a kind of planning that comes from from below from the people who have the actual knowledge um, on the inside of production um, so it's not enough just to rely on the government or the state to socialize industry it needs to involve the workers themselves and the communities that that would benefit from a different uh, set of priorities for for industry then i think the next principle is really about technology itself that that, that the lucas plan was saying actually technology is not a given it's not like you know there's only one way to do things technology can be designed for different purposes and that technology itself is almost a political decision about what kind of technology is used you know like automation automation some of the technologies of automation can be used to enhance human capacity enhance the power of of the hand if you like um and um uh, on the other hand it can also be used to destroy human capacity so the um the Lucas plan included a product called, it was called Telesuric, a Telesuric device, which literally in Latin or Greek, I don't know, means hands at a distance. Telesuric means hands at a distance. And the, um, the technology of automation can, can produce tools or uh, mechanisms whereby the, the knowledge and the, um, the capacity of the designer or the engineer can be transmitted into a remote control um, mechanism that can deal with dangerous situations so let's say you know removing barnacles from uh, oil um, you know oil investigation investigation you know machinery at the bottom of the sea or or more useful kinds of investigations of the ocean um, that can be done you know without the danger of deep sea divers but can be done through a remote control device so all these different technologies can be used in different ways 